Hello everybody, Kyle here. I am getting things set up. This is our very first live stream of the podcast. I'm not sure uh, if we'll run into any technical issues today. It might happen. But I'm doing this live stream over on Twitch and YouTube today. I did not tell anybody that I will be doing this podcast today, so it's a total surprise, total secret. And in fact, I don't want to be paying too much attention to chat today. I want to stick to the the, the meat and the root of this podcast to uh, explain some of the news in the latest newsletter. It just came out today, actually. In fact, June 5th, I leaked this one a little early up on the website. Pardon me, I'm going to rehash a couple of these points here in a minute as we dive into content. Um, actually, I'll go ahead and formally start the recording here soon. But just to set it up, just to make sure that the bandwidth looks good, we'll have a little chit-chat here and say, I was super sick the last week or so. And in fact, you might still be able to hear that in my nose. I'm still a little nasally all this time later. Uh, then I broke a tooth on top of all of that. Like, what a time. Didn't know, but had a cavity in a tooth. Didn't feel it until bit down on a cookie of all things, a hard uh, chocolate chip cookie. And thankfully that didn't hurt much. It was, it was something that I already had a, a cavity in years before, I guess, and drilled. And so, I don't know. I got to figure out, get to the dentist as soon as possible. And oh, fun times in capitalism, right, everybody? Okay. That being said, now you know a little bit of why I've been a MIA. I've been a little missing in action these last couple days. And that's it. That's my background. Let me get my drink. Got some coffee here. Uh, much too much sweetener in this coffee. See, that'll rot your teeth out in all seriousness. Here we go. Hello, everyone. You are listening to Kyle's Communist Podcast. My name is Kyle. Welcome to the show. We are recapping our June 5th newsletter. That's our What I'm Watching series that you can find at kylecommunist.com. This last week, we recapped stories including the Memorial Day shootings, recapped students refusing to pay back student loans when the pause ends, Supreme Court issues far-reaching attack on the right to strike attacking unions in the U.S., Macron not doing so well over there in France. Pushback getting strong. We also include in the newsletter some great Soviet history, including a wonderful news, or I should say a, a music magazine that was sent out, including uh, uh, really cool records. There's some music up there in this newsletter. I encourage you to go dive in and, and listen to all that yourself. But today, as we do on this show, we are going to recap these news stories. We're going to get into them a little bit in depth. want to welcome people out there. Uh, in the Twitch stream, in the YouTube stream. Thank you all for coming out today. This is the first time we're doing the podcast live. Let's face it, the podcast has only been going for maybe two or three weeks again. I'm kind of a little bit of a throwback to the history of this show. Kyle's Communist Book Club was a podcast two or so years ago. He met a lot of great friends in Russia through it, and, and slowly it grew and changed shape and became a Twitch stream and all the rest. Now we are using this space as a... Um, an addition is a, a, a component of this newsletter we publish. So we recap Marxist news throughout the week. We recap Marxist history throughout the week. We publish this all up to kylecommunist.com. And this podcast is your audio tour through the newsletter. Of course, I can't show you the things here in audio form, but I can give you some extra insights and things that aren't included in these articles. Let's start off with news uh, that's been breaking since we last got together that is the Memorial Day weekend shootings, 16 deaths and 80 injuries here in the United States. That took place over 20 mass shootings. So 16 deaths, 80 injuries. That brings us just four from 100 there. When you add those together, that is uh, what, 96 people shot. That is an insane number. We are living in, uh, I, I, I don't know what, what other countries would consider like a gangland or, or, or just like, I, I don't even know in such a day and age where we have imperialist wars. I don't mean to make the false equivalency that the United States feels like a war zone. I don't mean to be unsympathetic, though at the same time, when you've got 100 people shot over a weekend and that's 
that number is high for a weekend, but it is typical for an everyday event, meaning there are shootings every day. I, I, don't, I don't know. At what limit is it radically different than a war zone? I mean, we don't have shells dropping or, or bombs dropping, but we certainly do have people making bomb threats. We have statues being blown up. We have uh, buildings being firebombed by Nazi types. So that meaning Molotov cocktails and otherwise burning LGBT centers. I, I, it's the typical stuff, gang. It's, it's all the attacks on the, the minority and scapegoated groups. It is gun violence perpetuated by a crowd of people that the GOP has specifically been stirring up for the past couple years. Of course, the Democrats are just as guilty. They are two sides of the same coin i like doodler out there in the twitch chat it said something about don't get sick if you do you'll die quickly that is the gop health plan the united states does not at all take health care seriously nor does it care about the lives of its citizens otherwise we would have done something about this mass shooting events a long time ago however we've only stoked the flames let me read the rest of this little summary generated up on our website it says one of the shootings occurred in hollywood beach florida where nine people were injured the shootings were tracked by the gun violence archive which defines a mass shooting as an incident in which at least four people are injured or killed not including the shooter so you have some extra background going on for that anyway you can check this out it's at kylecommunist.com we've got links back to all the articles within the newsletter uh, we actually do a local sort of save of these copies as well, these these newsletters, or uh, pardon me, the, the actual sources we're pulling from. We do a local copy because I am petrified in this day and age uh, of, of so many sites being shut down. I often talk about Marxist.org being one of my great fears. It's a website that is has been around for years and years, and I don't know what sustains them. I don't know if the person that hosts it is has like a robust finance to keep that going. But in a day and age where the U.S. government is radically, like regularly attacking archives of media, information, etc., uh, it, it seems like it's not going to be very long before they go after a site like that. So please do take the time, if you are a fellow Marxist out there, make local saves of your favorite materials if you can afford it to buy them in book form i you know do as you will with that books can be physically destroyed just as easily as digital information can be erased so uh, spend your money wisely uh but but do try and make free backup copies of all this stuff save it to your clouds and your your whatevers let's move on to this next story this one personally impacts me so i'm i'm a little interested Students are refusing to pay back their loans when payment pause ends. This is for folks in the United States uh, during the COVID pandemic. Loans, student loans specifically, those to pay for college were put on pause. For anyone listening outside of the country, university or college here in the United States is extremely expensive. I think I myself made it out with only $35,000 of student debt. And that is really low in today's world where some people get roped into paying, uh, what gang, like 90,000 a semester I've heard. I mean, they're, 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 I'm sure that's even on the <laughs> middle upper tier these days. I'm sure there's things that are much higher than that. Uh, but I had a cousin at one point scoping out a, a flight school uh, meaning he was going to do a four-year college. I don't know what all was involved, but it was focused on flight. And he, the thing that made him back out was he was going to be so in debt by the time he graduated that that wasn't going to be worth it for him. We're living in a, a worse state of that. For me, this was back around the 2010-2011 the window. For people nowadays, it's got to be much, 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 much worse. So let's take a little recap of this article. It says some college graduates are suggesting a boycott on repaying student loans once the current federal loan payment pause ends in the summer. The state backed a House resolution that would cancel Biden's student loan forgiveness plan, 
but the president has pledged to veto this bill. The debt limit deal agreed between President Biden and Speaker, Speaker Kevin McCarthy says the pause will cease to be effective from 60 days after June 30th. I mean, my plan is, is, is always to pay back the absolute bare minimum because this is a joke. We were scammed terribly. We were uh, pushed into college right out of high school. Many of us, it did not help us. Uh, many people are not doing the, the work that they got a degree in. Many of those fields that we got degrees in aren't seeking people either anymore because of the post-COVID economy or they haven't been... Uh, <laughs> there was a lot of training for jobs that were going out of fashion and things like that. It's really, really nasty to think that so many of us are strapped with this debt that is very soul-crushing. I mean, it's, it's, it's preventing people from... Purchasing homes, I have no doubt. It's it's just it's just a big worry, and um, at times, it has wanted me to pay into my own upwards of three hundred dollars a month, and I've never had a voluntary like plus three hundred dollars a month that I could just throw at student loans. And I want to say it comes back around like it's that you can opt into different programs on their website for repayment. But uh, eventually they come back to you and say like, well, your next bill has increased and you need to pay. I went at one point from paying like 120 or something, something I could manage the whole way up to, yeah, they were trying to charge me like 360. For a couple months, I couldn't manage it. I was like, okay, let's see. I had a job that was a little different, but I mean, not everyone's in a situation like that. And it almost broke me. Had I not been like really managing my finances really closely, it would have tanked my income at the time. Uh, Texas, thank you so much for that sub out there. By the way, this is a reminder that we are recording today's podcast while we're live over on Twitch and YouTube. So people are welcome to jump in the chat there. Uh, let's see what else people are saying. Derek over there says, I'm not going to so spend 90,000 USD through all my life. So it seems to me I never would be able to have a salary of more than $1,000 in my country. And that's... <sighs> The economy around the globe, my friend, is, is only going to get worse and worse and worse. You talk about recession over here in the United States as all of our banks fail. That is going to have global ramifications. This is why we are probably going to see socialist uprisings in, uh, in, in my lifetime, at least. I th I'm fairly convinced it's going to happen. Not <laughs> There's, there's a two-parter here. One. I think our greatest weakness is that the working class does not have class awareness. That is, I think, the thing that shoots down every idea that my friends want to do. We sit around Discord and we say, well, let's go ahead and try like this project. And our immediate thing is, well, are people class aware for us to do that? Like we have to do more education before we get to stage two, right? right? All, all kinds of cool ideas start at stage two. We've got to get people aware. Otherwise, they see you as their enemy, not someone that's trying to fix society and, and that is where we largely sit right people are people are sliding down that fascist uh slide much quicker much quicker to blame the immigrants the jews the blacks the gays the this the that the other the, 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 the aliens right literally literally people are blaming the aliens from space uh isn't that wild like i'm not joking when i say that people are actually just full up blaming the aliens when it is simply our bourgeois elite that are hand in hand integrated with our politicians they are launching rockets into space that we are paying for and subsidizing as taxpayers they are building mega yachts to sail around the world which are staffed by near slave labor um, that dock in ports that do allow slave labor that do allow uh crimes against children right our our our, I'm in a podcast and I'm using air quotes, everyone. Our air quotes, elites out there, this upper crust of society is the most perverted, the most defiled, the most deranged group out there. They have us hating each other. They have us thinking gay people are groomers. Yet every day, these politicians are caught doing the same thing they're crying about on the news. Almost everything they cry about on an interview is an act that they have done, right? right? Some of our biggest 
uh, anti anti groomer politicians. They're the ones that have the sex scandals where they were touching children or their husband flashed his penis to kids at a bowling alley. You know, like all all of. It is such a thou doth protest too much in our political arena. So be very careful, right? Be very, be very aware of the news. That is why we do this newsletter up on the website, kylecommunist.com. Make sure you get involved, everyone. It's why we highlight these stories that we do. Having solid Marxist influence uh, when you're reading the news is a great thing to analyze what sources like you know, AP and all the rest are putting out there. There, There is a kernel of truth in their stories, though it's wrapped in such falsehoods. It's why it helps to read things together. It's why it helps to read things with that Marxist edge. You got to be tracing the money and seeing how the, the strings are being pulled. Otherwise, you know, all these sources are trying to push us into uh, intra-class war, culture war, forcing us to fight one another instead of our adversary. Hey, let's talk about more of that, by the way. U.S. Supreme Court issues far-reaching attack on the right to strike. This was reported by World Socialist website. Uh, summary is the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled in favor of allowing employers to file lawsuits and recover monetary compensation for damages incurred as a result of a strike, expanding the concept of reasonable... Pro uh, sorry expanding the concept of reasonable precautions to such an extent that it would make any strike illegal if it causes any harm to the company's bottom line. This decision undermines the right to strike and reduces workers to the status of unfree laborers, effectively bound to work for their employee against their will unless special permission is granted from above. The decision opens the floodgates for employers to unilaterally file lawsuits in the event of every future strike, claiming that they unfairly suffered damages as a result of workers' failure to take, quote, reasonable precautions to make sure that the company was not harmed by the strike I'm going to go off of memory here for a second. We can take a look at this article. I think we should probably do it here together because this is a big one. But having seen the overview to this and shared some of this to my Instagram recently, put up some informational stuff. Uh, this comes from a lawsuit where I believe this was a construction company of sorts that goes after the Teamsters because there was cement from a concrete truck that was left on a strike scene because this had to do with cement. Uh, crew workers that were striking, they had left the trucks to spin so the cement wouldn't set in that time, but uh, there was some mess left behind, and as a result, they were sued uh, on the state level, but it got bumped to a federal level because this involves federal organizations like the Teamsters, and again, that's why this is a Supreme Court issue here. So let's go ahead and actually read this article. I really, I really like WSW. S. It's maybe a longer article, so I'm not going to read every bit of it. Let's go ahead. Uh, on Thursday, the U.S. Supreme Court handed down a decision that was a massive attack on the right of workers to strike. By an 8-to-1 vote, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of allowing, allowing an employer to file a lawsuit and recover monetary compensation for, quote, damages incurred as a result of a strike. The existing labor law requires striking workers to make a reasonable precautions to protect the employer's property from being unnecessarily damaged by sudden work stoppage. In its decision Thursday, the Supreme Court invoked and expanded this concept to such an extent that it would take into its logical conclusion, make any strike illegal if it caused any harm to the company's bottom line. So if they lose any kind of money off of this, and that would be things, again, I'm pulling from those infographics in the back of my mind. Someone mentioned, like, this would be Starbucks workers uh, getting sued over milk that spoiled, coffee that went bad, like anything like that in the, in the Starbucks that they're unionizing and striking from now. Uh, they could be sued for those tiny little losses. And, and before we continue reading the article, I want you all to know 
yes, you should feel like you're in a bizarro universe right now because this is effectively saying, yes, you worker, if you choose to protect your rights, if you choose to defend yourself, you will be just fully fined by the company. This, to me, really reminds me of all of that Victorian and in early industrialization history you learn about. Um, this is the sort of stuff that the United States uh, has been having problems with. But I want to say that us in the modern era, like our window of being alive, uh, maybe this has been a huge problem and I just haven't known about it. But this this is one of those things that's it has been protected against up until now. Uh, so it's allowed striking to occur more. Now we're going way back to the early days of striking where the employees, if they choose to strike or well, I mean, again, find them for all the losses, sue them for all the losses. That's what the businesses are going to do. Uh, it's going to make this a lot, lot harder. And uh, I, think, I think it's going to push what a strike turns into. I think this is what's one of those aspects that will change people from doing what we could argue is more of a casual strike right now to more of a violent strike in the future. Because you can't peacefully strike anymore. If, if you peacefully strike, you're going to be sued for damages. Even if those damages are you simply not being in the store, right? So the only way to strike from now on will be to eliminate the owners of the company because you can't do anything less than that, right? I mean, I know that sounds extremely radical because it is, but anything less than that will be a suable offense. So it's, I don't know, they're, 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 they are making their own coffin on this one. Like this, 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 is, this is watching bureaucrats build coffins, not realizing it. Like a lot, a lot more of us, the workers, are going to suffer terribly first. But again, this sets the stage. This, they're building their own gallows, if you will. There's, there's no way the, the working people can continue with this forever. Okay, back to where we left off here. It says, um, damaging the company's bottom line to the maximum extent possible, utilizing the power of the organizing rank and file is, of course, the whole point of a strike, which is a fundamental democratic right and an essential form of workers' collective self-defense. That's what I was trying to say. They said it beautifully. In her dissenting opinion... Uh, Jackson, the sole justice to vote against the decision, suggested that the issue in the case was nothing less than whether workers are legally free or whether they are, are indentured servants who can be prohibited by law from t putting down their tools. Ooh, I'm sorry, I'm jumping in and I'm, I'm putting lots of things. Uh, I, I didn't yet... Like this, this article I hadn't read verbatim. I had read the summary for this today, planning that we would talk more. And so when I gave my little spiel a second ago, I really didn't know that was going to be the, the context right next in the article. That's, that's exactly what I referenced or meant to say. That's kind of what I was getting at when I was saying the throwback to Victorian era laws. Uh, what they say here? Nothing less than whether workers are legally free or whether they are indentured servants who can be prohibited by law from putting down their tools. I think that's one of the big scaries. That's the, that's one of the aspects uh, of quote, air quotes again, air quote freedom that we have under modern capitalism is the kind of back and forth where people are like, oh, you're free enough to go get it, get whatever job you want. You're free to, kind of move and change location and like we have these we have these ideas of freedom and they look quite enticing if you see them from a certain angle if this goes into effect this is one of those massive slashes against people's perceived freedom if you're not allowed to uh i mean if this continues escalating and it w and it will and it will as this continues to escalate, people are going to see that perceived freedom shrink when you trying to leave work gets you thrown into prison as a like a new type of labor deserter, but a capitalist labor deserter. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. 
workers are, reading back to the article, there's a quote here, workers are not indentured servants bound to continue laboring until any planned work stoppage would be as painless as possible for their master. Jackson continued, existing labor law, she went on, protects the right of workers to a collective and peaceful decision to withhold their labor. The remaining eight Supreme Court justices disagreed. The ostensibly liberal justices, uh, Kagan and Sotomayor, joined the sixth justice block that constitutes the far-right majority in an opinion authored by Justice Barrett, uh, a Christian fundamentalist appointed by President Trump, former President Trump, <laughs> who continues to cause all kinds of animosity on the public stage now under the legal legal framework adopted by the majority as jackson implies workers are effectively reduced to the status of unfree laborers by default bound to work for their employers against their will unless and until special permission is granted from above to stop the case arose from a strike of cement truck drivers that took place at a concrete works operated by glacier northwest in kenmore washington after the workers' contract expired on July 31st of 2017, and the company refused to accept the minimal terms put forward by the Teamsters, the union was compelled to call a strike on August 11th of 2017. Of the 80 to 90 concrete trucks, uh, I'm sorry, of the 80 to 90 concrete truck drivers in the collective bargaining unit, 43 were scheduled to work on the day the strike began. On a typical workday, the drivers would pick up and deliver between three and six truckloads of concrete. Meanwhile, the concrete would continuously be prepared, aka batched, while the work site, oh, I'm sorry, at the work site and loaded into the trucks throughout the day. The concrete delivery trucks are fitted with rotating drums that prevent the concrete from hardening during transit. When the appointed time for the strike arrived at Glacier Northwest, some of the trucks were at the company's yard in the process of being loaded and some were out for delivery. There were 16 drivers who had undelivered concrete in their trucks at the time the strike had started. Ignoring management's demands that they deliver the concrete, the drivers safely returned the trucks to the yard fully loaded. This was accomplished without any damage to the trucks, to any equipment, or to the environment. Glacier Northwest claimed that it was damaged by the strike because of some of the concrete could not be delivered and therefore could not be used. This is wholly frivolous as a factual matter. Because the concrete is batched and delivered throughout the workday, any work stoppage would necessarily interrupt that process and potentially cause the loss of some of the concrete. More importantly, from a legal standpoint, the driver's contract had already expired, so the company cannot, uh, cannot claim to be, quote, surprised that the drivers abruptly walked out, given that they had already long since fulfilled the legal requirements of the agreement they had been working under. The union, as required by law, gave management 60 days notice. If anything, management should have been grateful that this, the trucks were all safely and conscientiously returned after the strike started instead of left on the side of the road where they could have been damaged by the hardening concrete. Under the circumstances, Glacier Northwest had nobody to blame for the damages but itself. So me jumping back in uh, kind of Coming to a conclusion on this, you can go read the rest of the article on your own. But as you can see from the very start of this, we're looking at a situation where workers were already without a contract. They were already trying to get something put in place. They were already working with the Teamsters Union. Nothing was being accomplished. The, the, Glacier Northwest was being immobile on it, as most companies are. The They had been given 60 days of notice, but now they're complaining that they were surprised that their workers had left and damaged these trucks, even though clearly the workers had not damaged the trucks. They had returned them to the facility in the best possible condition. Um, there is an easy way, by the way, for the companies to have kept their trucks in good working order, and that is to pay their employees to you know, renegotiate contracts very quickly in the favor of their employees, but they were unwilling to do so. And as a result, they ran off to the bourgeois courts for protection. And as corrupt bourgeois courts do, they side with the capitalists. The workers always lose. So here we are 
losing, losing, losing. And this is going to be a big one, gang. So I'm going to encourage you to go finish out that article. Maybe I'll take a... I don't want to leave you on, on such a note here. We already know the, the formal outcome. Let me see if there's anything else at the bottom. Uh, they don't really include the greatest leap off. But I did see something in here. This is what I was really teasing me. There was a mention of the, the Ukraine war. And I was curious if they had worked that in, in a specific way in relation. I saw maybe UPS was mentioned with it. The Supreme Court's decision is amid squarely at keeping the growing tide of workplace militancy in the United States within safe channels as major contract battles loom on the immediate horizon, including the auto industry and at UPS. Moreover, in the context of the escalating U.S.-NATO war in Ukraine, the decision is a further confirmation of the historical law that imperialist war abroad means attacks on domestic rights at home. There you go. That's the lookout. That's the last one of the article I wanted to read. That's That sets you up nicely. Uh, by the way, you can go and check out the rest of this article this week where you can learn about Macron over in France. I have a video here of the raid in Atlanta, Georgia that happened for the people that were organizing legal support for the protesters of Cop City. Go watch that video if you get the chance. In the books and articles segment, I have a couple things from when I was sick and was sitting around just listening to Marxist books. There is an address of the Central Committee to the Communist League. That is actually going to be our focus for Thursday's book club. I really encourage you to get involved with that. That is on Discord this Thursday. That is 9 p.m. Eastern time, New York City time, if you want to add it to your phone like that. You can get involved right on the Discord server in the events tab. It's on your bar on the left side. It's uh, up towards the very, very top. There's an events tab when there's a new event. It, it shows up when there's no events, it goes away. You can RSVP to the book club. Very nice and handy, easy to do. Put it in your phone or make an event like that too. Set yourself an alarm. I don't trust Discord alerts at all. <laughs> My friends pinged me six times last night and I got all six pings half an hour later after I was already in a voice call with them. So uh, don't rely on Discord to tell you when the, the meeting starts, but I can tell you it's 9 p.m. Eastern on Thursday, every Thursday. We, we come together. This one's a very important read. This is Marx and Engels. You can learn more about this further down in the newsletter too. But this is Marx and Engels. They are talking about the famous quote. Oh, I see. I got a little bit of an, a little little glitch there up on the newsletter. I got to fix it. Still talks about Kalantai's work there. Uh, not, not talking about Marx and Engels. So I'll fix that later. But in this one, uh, Marx and Engels are, are, are talking about the famous under no pretext quote. So when we're talking about the right to, for, for workers to have arms and stay armed, it's not used in the exact context that people think, but it is a very powerful quote. This article is really useful, this address. It actually is ex exceptionally useful at warning people against joining the modern-day Democratic Party. They bring up recurring phrases that we all know very well, like, don't vote independent or don't do this. You're going to split the party. <laughs> uh, they actually talk about that. It, 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 those are their words about the split. So you can, you can check that out with us. We read them together on Thursdays. We pause at sections. We take questions. We've had up to 14 of us there at once. It's absolutely beautiful. I would love your continued support. So keep coming out. Keep learning. And we're going to make a program, just letting you know it's in the works. We're going to do our own little Komsomol style program here in the server that for people who are attending the book club regularly, you're going to get some extra perks, some extra roles, some extra status there. Um, that, that I think is how people are going to join into the Vanguard role that's been sitting there teasing people on the Discord server. So if you're interested in becoming a Vanguard member, I'm just letting you know now, it's probably going to be tied into the uh, attendance for book club. So cut that out in your calendar if you can. Save that spot. Block out that window. There's also some good things in here. 80 years since the dissolution of the Communist International, widening fissures in world relations and the tasks of communists. That's a great one. That is a really great read summarizing the Ukraine war for people that are interested. Uh, it's not the most detailed, but it is, it is, a, it is a, a nice one. 
Uh, Disneyland Paris workers are on strike. Got some information about that. And then just a tease that this upcoming Sunday, June 4th, we are watching the film. Watch out for the automobile. It is a Soviet film, so that takes place on Soviet Film Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern. That's the wrong time. It says June 4. What is going on? <laughs> I got to refix these at the bottom of the schedule. That's not June 4. I'm recording this on June 5. <laughs> that will be on June 11. Pardon me, folks. There was a... I reworked how a, a component of these newsletters happen, and clearly I've got to get back in there and do some... Some tweaking under the hood, but that is June 11th. By the time you go and see this newsletter, it's going to look nice and fine, so don't worry about it. Uh, and by the way, Book Club, just for clarity's sake, is on June 8th. That is at 9 p.m. Eastern. Now that you got all your times figured out, now that I've sorted them and, and resituated them, I'm going to let you go for the day, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you to the people that joined us over on Twitch. Thank you for the people that joined us over on Discord. You can find both. Oh, I'm sorry, over on YouTube. You can find both of those at Kyle Communist. You can find all of these links up at the website. Most of them are up under the top bar, especially the Discord server. It's got a nice big old button there for you to click go get involved with these newsletters they are kylecommunist.com straight under the header they are right away easy to get there is one very last housekeeping thing and that is my instagram i am starting to move to kyle the communist on instagram because kyle communist though it has like three thousand followers and you think it's doing well it, uh, it, it's not being seen. Instagram it continues to get pissy with me. In fact, they dinged me for sharing a Holocaust remembrance post, uh, the pink triangles related to Pride Month and everything, right? The, the, the gays in uh, specifically homosexual men, but LGBT people put into concentration camps in Nazi Germany had a pink triangle they had to wear. And I, I made a, there was a repost of an educational thing. Someone had already posted this to Instagram. I want to make that clear again. This 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 issue dings me. Someone had already shared this educational post. I simply posted it to my story and boop. You are promoting hateful ideology. I'm like, bro, I, I am gay. I'm warning against the Holocaust. If that's if I get that is hateful under liberal uh, neoliberalism. There's your answer. OK, everyone. Neoliberalism is your enemy. Capitalism is your enemy. Go educate your friends. Go get them to join our book club. And I will see you next week. Be safe. Look out for Thursday's newsletter. Until then, bye-bye.